In today's show, a hater's guide to the NBA playoffs, how Trailblazers fans can root against every team brought to you by a real life hater. Welcome to Lockdown Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trailblazers, your daily Portland Trailblazers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, world? It's your past first point guard and Trailblazers reporter, Mike Richmond. You are listening to another episode of Locked On Blazers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Thanks for making this show your first listen, coming at you each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. So make it a part of your daily routine. Make your first listen. Tell your friends to do the same. It's Locked On Blazers, your team every day. Today's episode does not sound like I recorded it on two coconuts, like some episodes I maybe posted earlier this week, or at least yesterday's show. A coconut-based episode. We're back. The microphone's working, and we got the Hater's Guide to the NBA Playoffs. We're going to talk how to root against every team in the league in order to benefit the Trail Blazers. We're heading into the playoffs. Um, It's like it's like two and a half months long you're gonna need you're gonna need a little hook something to root against when you're watching these teams we did this last year and now it's our first annual haters guides to the playoffs we'll run through every team that's in the postseason and give you a it give you a reason to root against them and a specific blazers tie-in let's just start at the top here's how you're gonna root against the boston celtics maybe they go on a deep run and they see that they're good because they've been good for closing in on a decade. Eight years of just a really good team. Not quite there, but good. And when they reach the promised land, they meet Nikola Jokic. And Al Horford's too old. Kristaps Porzingis is too frail. And Xavier Tillman just isn't good enough to stay on the floor on the other end. And they know what they need. They need a reunion, baby! And they call the Trailblazers up and say, how do we get Rob Williams back? We we believe we can get him back to his near defensive player of the year levels. His health can get right. How do we get him back? All the picks we have remaining, we're willing to give up to you. We don't got much, but we're willing to give away what we've got in order to get Rob Williams back. Here's a quick hater's guide caveat. The new apron rules, the new CBA rules for teams that are a certain uh, level above the tax threshold, the Blazers are projected to be a first apron team, which means they cannot take back more money in a trade. Uh, But second apron teams like Boston, uh, Denver, the Clippers, Milwaukee, Minnesota, and Phoenix, six teams are projected to be in the second apron. They cannot take back... Um, more money than they send out in a trade. So it has to match. They can't aggregate players, so they can't like send multiple they can't send out multiple players to achieve the right salary. And um and they have they so they gotta match money. They can't aggregate players and they can't send out cash to like to sweeten deals and they can't use existing trade exceptions. If you're a second apron team, it's really hard. I don't know that the the Celtics, when I peek at it, have a good way to get Rob Williams. But it's possible. If you truly believe, uh, it's possible. So uh, some of this haters got, I just want to like admit that um, it's not perfect with the new CBA rules. It's not perfect. It is. There's some restrictive rules to very good and very expensive teams. Uh, partic- the second apron rules are very, very prohibitive. First apron rules are just, you can't take back more money than you send out, which would be a problem for the Blazers because um, th- 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 it makes them not doing anything at the trade deadline even more challenging because if they want to make trades, it gets a little bit tougher. So the the thing you're rooting against Boston is they get their size gets exposed a little bit and they desperately need a reunion with Rob Williams. Moving down the Eastern Conference real quick, the New York Knicks, well, they just realized that elder enthusiast Tom Thibodeau needs more vets on the roster. Deuce McBride just doesn't cut it. The magic of Dante DiVincenzo in the regular season doesn't exactly translate into the playoffs. And what they need is a tried and true veteran who's made the Eastern Conference Finals with two separate programs, Indiana and Boston. And why not do it a third time in the Eastern Conference? Bring them Malcolm Brogdon. The Knicks? No apron restrictions. The projected have no apron restrictions. They can, they can make it work. And Brogdon would give them a little bit more juice as a shooter, a little bit more juice as a creator, and maybe he's just exactly what they'll need once they collapse in the playoffs and see that my man Deuce McBride is just not quite the answer. What about Milwaukee? Are any of you rooting against the Bucks? I don't think so. They're a second apron team, so they're they're really restricted. I don't 
I don't really know how the Bucks make a move with the Blazers looking at their roster. The Bucks don't really have like an appealing salary that would fit into what the Blazers have that would help them specifically. Um, maybe what you're rooting for um, is like Damian Lord to be really good in the playoffs as vindication for um, trading him to uh, Milwaukee and getting a package back that was more palatable than maybe what they were offering from that one team in South Florida. Um, I don't know how you trade with the Bucks. So the haters guide is that um, you're going to be hating on another team watching Dame, I guess, or maybe some magic happens and Dame says, give away any pick you have left on the shelf and let's make the money work for Amphrey Simons. Although peeking at the roster, I don't know how they make a, a trade work. For for Dame's buddy Anthony Simons, I guess the real truth is here. Don't root against the Bucks. The Haters Guide says, um, I don't know. It'd be fun. I, don't know, I think a lot of NBA fans like watching Doc Rivers fail. So maybe maybe that there's what you have. Uh, let's, let's flip to the other side real quick. Top of the Western Conference bracket, Oklahoma City. Maybe they're just too young. Maybe they're just too young. Maybe playoff experience matters, and that's what they realize. And then they come a call, and and they say, give us. You're long, you're your 40% jump shooters and your bucket hunters. That's right. The best shooting team in the NBA wants to add more shooting and more length. They say, bring me Jeremy Grant back to Oklahoma City where he belongs. Or Malcolm Brogdon, whatever it is. They need a vet. And they need a vet who can who can continue to do like fit what they do, which is like go get buckets. Um and maybe the sort of case on Wallace and Isaiah Joe stuff doesn't work for them in the playoffs. And they realize that MB, Malcolm Brogdon, another playmaker, ball handler type, uh, would would fit better. It allows them to sort of maybe move off Josh Giddy, who's a, who's like pretty intriguing, but not a shooter by any means. An intriguing basketball player, that is. Not an intriguing person, from my, my personal taste. Um, but they call. They say, give me a veteran. And you say, okay, Malcolm Brogdon or Jeremy Grant. You need help. You need help, and you need help over the age of 30. And you get find a deal with OKC. Moving down to Denver, um, they're another team, a second apron team, and uh, they don't have a lot of good trade pieces, but maybe they make it work, and they realize what they're missing is that Jeff Green magic off the bench. That's someone who can be solid, dependable, and has done it before. And by that, I mean a, a guy who's been in the league, been around, seen stuff, done stuff, and can be a helpful and wise veteran and so they say bring me Matisse Thibel and the Blazers say bring me an intriguing draft pick and the money to make it work and by an intriguing draft pick I mean like something deep into the future because Denver looks like they're going to be good for a little while um really like I, I think I had the same problem with Denver last year when I was doing the haters guide their their core pieces are expensive and fit perfectly together and their sort of young ancillary pieces are all that they're young and ancillary pieces and then like reggie jackson um deandre jordan it's like not exactly guys you would trade for I, i'm having trouble exactly finding a perfect trade partner but yeah maybe they really need matisse thibel and they're willing to pay the piper to do so what about minnesota this is an intriguing one a team that's extremely expensive extremely expensive they're going to be up against it with the with the second apron um if they do need to make moves it's going to be challenging for them because the idea everyone keeps floating is that they'll trade carl anthony towns but that's going to be hard to do with those second apron restrict restrictions but let's say they figure it out they're like okay we're going to get off towns we're going to move here and it's a massive multi-team deal and the blazers come a call and they say we'd like to get in in that massive multi-team deal and they get off of Jeremy Grant's money and get something back in return in some big old fancy second apron, uh, you know, uh, what is it like some, some kind of super math genius that I can't quite see, but it finally happens. They get off cat. The Blazers get a, a first round pick and maybe something else in exchange for, for Jeremy Grant. I think you're just hoping that, um, for a team like Minnesota, that's what you're rooting against and sort of the haters guide is that they collapse and then they have to make moves because they feel really pressured to make moves with a really expensive roster. And then they start making trades. You know, they lose to Phoenix in the opening round and they start making trades. And it's like, okay, okay. The chaos is here, right? And when big money cat is moving around and like in his giant deal, then other teams who are also sort of like, oh, we also have some restrictions about the money we can move. And then it just starts a domino effect of massive sort of like everyone skirting the apron type of moves. And the Blazers can sweep in the aftermath uh, and be involved and get something for their troubles. Okay, 
Speaking of expensive teams, let's talk. Let's talk about Phoenix. Let's talk Philly. A couple others in the second segment. Join me there, won't you? But first, I want to tell you that this show is brought to you by Yahoo Finance. Would you like to see all of your investment accounts? Say you got an IRA and a 401k. You want to see them all sitting in the same place? Well, why not check out Yahoo Finance? For over 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or are looking for extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. You can securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including, like I said, your 401k and other investments. And you can get a comprehensive perspective to, for what you can do and what your money can do because that's what Yahoo Finance does. They ensure that you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. And with a community of over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor. It's yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. Today's show is also brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We are in, we are in the, the true postseason glory days for the NBA and the NHL. We got the baseball season in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to wager on every game. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 when you play a bet, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe and secure and easy to use. What you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right. We're still hating. Let's keep it rolling. Look, there's expensive teams out there, and Phoenix is one of those expensive teams. So th with their extremely pricey roster, it's like, how are they going to make this work? And I look at it and say, I don't know. I think you're just rooting for them to fail because they're so dang expensive. <laughs> like, I was trying to cook up ways uh, for Phoenix to, like, you know, give Chris they don't have they don't even have first round picks to trade when when they hit when they hit the new year they'll be able to trade a first round pick in 2031 all of their picks are spoken for either a swaps or 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 outright owed to folk owed to other teams until 2030 the next first round pick they could trade unencumbered is in 2031 but because they're a second apron team they can't use existing uh uh Trade exceptions. So the trade exception they have from campaign, they can't even use to absorb a larger contract like Chris Murray. They can't even use it to absorb a larger contract like Duop Reith in case they want to add another Blazers backup center, another Blazers center to the to the rotation. They say, you know what, Joe Crone's pretty good at finding centers. Let's add a third one to the mix. They just like they don't have what are you gonna do? Like even finding a trade to get like get Nazir Little back, which I don't think is that appealing. It's, hard to figure out with Phoenix. I think the haters guide for Phoenix is just rooting for them to lose because they're an exp they're an expensive roster and you say, "Haha, it didn't work. Nice try, Matt Ishbia. Keep sending out predatory lo predatory loans for folks. Um, you know, I hope <laughs> Hope all your mortgages fail, um, and hope your basketball team is too expensive to make to make to even fix the mistakes you've already made. Um, so we did Phoenix. Let's bounce to the bottom of the East. How about Indiana? Um, maybe they just need Malcolm Brogdon back. Maybe what they realize is that they miss the shooting compliment that Buddy Heald had when and when they sh when they shipped him out when they sent him to Philadelphia. What they miss next to Tyrese Halliburton is another just dynamic off-ball shooter to really challenge the defense and give them the space they need. And they say, you know what? You know who's shooting over fifty percent on catch and shoot threes for the majority of the season? Malcolm Brogdon, bring him home, and some sort of combination of Aaron e. Smith and T.J. McConnell, who's like pretty good for them, um, and and maybe like a, more of an emotional leader that I'm giving him credit for. But maybe that maybe they they realize that they they have to upgrade because they're they're capable of being good right now. And they they flop out of there without the shooting they need to make the uh, the Tyrese Halliburton pick and roll spread pick and roll really hum. And they need Brogdon. What about Philly? What about Philly? They're the seventh seed. 
They they probably would have been higher up if Joel Embiid is is was healthy all year, but he wasn't. And Embiid will be at his playing his tenth season, a decade in the league next season, and maybe they could feel the heat of ten years in the league. And so what they want to do is they want to upgrade immediately, and their lack of depth gets exposed in the playoffs. Because they're playing freaking Kyle Lowry, Nicholas Batum, and Kelly Oubre next to their starting core. And while Nico was nuts and he was incredibly entertaining, he's still a man in his late 30s. Kyle Lowry's one of the oldest players in the league, and Kelly Oubre's on a minimum and is somewhat unreliable. So what they need is more reliable veteran depth, and they just need anyone that isn't Tobias Harris. So they say, you know who's just like not quite Tobias Harris? Jeremy Grant, and we're willing to pay for it. And the Sixers, with loaded, armed with cap space to perhaps absorb a giant contract, or maybe they finagle it some other ways, say, we need Jeremy back. Bring him home. The process returned. Give us JG. Bouncing back to the Western Conference, what about your Los Angeles Clippers? Much like Phoenix, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. What is these really expensive rosters? And I think this is like the true, this sort of um, challenge of the haters guide this year with teams like Minnesota and, and the Clippers uh, and, and, and Phoenix and Milwaukee, um, like, and and Boston, Boston's really freaking good. I don't think like you could just hate hate on them because they're really freaking good. But like teams that, that are like maybe not, not quite in that true circle or, or you think like, oh, they're fringe contenders. Everything's got to break right. Maybe for like, if you, if you're a believer in, in, in Minnesota and, and the Clippers, it's like everything's, everything's got to work out and they got to be perfectly healthy and yada, yada, yada. And they, then you could squint and kind of see them playing in the finals. Like it's just hard for them to improve with Minnesota. Like what I cooked up was like, maybe they trade Carl Anthony Towns and set off like a tidal wave of action with Phoenix. I don't even see that necessarily happening. A tidal wave of action. I just think they're kind of stuck they're kind of stuck. They could, you know, what they could use is they could use Tumani Kamara. But uh, luckily, the Blazers acquired him in that trade. Um, like the Phoenix is just has to kind of like continue to quadruple down and hope they nail some second round picks. Like that, that's their path, and that they're really healthy and that the big their big three works. And the Clippers are the same way. It's like, do they trade Russell? Like Russell Westbrook has a player option; he can opt in. It's like, do they trade Russell Westbrook? Do the Blazers want Russell Westbrook? What are the like would there would be some entertainment value i think some weird irony in having russell westbrook be your sort of like veteran presence off the bench behind scoot henderson i think i would i would enjoy that um as like narratively speaking but like what is he really what is he he would russ would not enjoy that like what like what what does he really do i don't i don't know what to do with these really expensive teams so throw 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 phoenix in that or throw the clippers in that same boat with phoenix it's like you're just rooting for them if you're a hater you're just rooting for them to fail because they're expensive and they can't make it work and maybe you're hoping and this is like sort of the long-term haters guide phoenix with you know kevin durant in his middle 30s uh the clippers uh, best two players are in their 30s uh like maybe you're just hoping that teams with an a- aging superstar cores uh, aging excellent cores like you know uh, players that are excellent now but might not be excellent for uh, you know a really long time that they're just kind of stuck and they just have to keep building with this same aging core and that the, they age out with a stuck roster that has very little avenues to improve just as the blazers continue to ascend so maybe the haters guide for teams like phoenix and the clippers is that they don't do anything they just lose and their only path forward is through they just grit their teeth and you know quintuple down on 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 the group they have because the rules of the nba make it nearly impossible to go any other direction let's do a couple more in the eastern conference what about cleveland here's a creative one for you maybe cleveland realizes when they lose in the playoffs to orlando in the opening round that going big while it seemed like it was going to work for them, just isn't. And they've got to break up the Evan Mobley and Jared Allen core. And in a, in a, in a multi-team deal, they send Jared Allen somewhere. And what they need back is shooting and and some and some you know defensive versatility to play next to Mobley as they're going to downsize, add more shooting, and play with space. When they were the best versions of themselves this year, that's what the lineups looked like. And so they say, give me 
Jeremy Grant. And 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 through a series of it wouldn't be like that. I don't think the Blazers would take back Jared Allen in this in this world, but through a, maybe a, a series of convoluted deals, the Blazers end up sending Jeremy Grant's and and receiving back somebody's young parts and a first round pick in exchange for maybe even Cleveland's own uh, future first rounder. And, and as Cleveland decides to to sort of reconfigure what they are because they start being realistic about what they can be. Um what about Orlando in that same series? This one is like the one that is has some has some teeth to it because everyone's been linking Anthony Simons to the Magic because like he's actually a skill set that they need. So maybe that the haters guide to Orlando is that like their offense just stinks and that a team that is huge and really good on defense realizes like we need one more guy who can go get it. Like we need another, like we need a player who we can throw the ball to and say, can you score please? Can you like run a pick and roll and shoot jumpers, you know, and yeah, shooting is really valuable for them too. Can you shoot as, as an operator, as a pull-up shooter, as a guy off the ball when Paolo Bencaro gets to be the, the primary operator and we can cover for your, for your deficiencies because we're a gigantic defensive team. And they say, give me Anthony Simons and we'll give you some combination of when Wendell Carter Jr. and Anthony Black, and then you make it work on with picks and going whichever way you might want it to go. But the Blazers end up with an intriguing young backup center in Wendell Carter Jr. and a, a young, bigger guard in Anthony Black who could conceivably play next to uh, the other two guards as like because he's like six 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 seven, or you just have a bigger backup to um to add some add some wing depth to your uh to like you know bigger guard depth to your eventual young core moving forward that's that's your a realistic haters guide is that Orlando realizes what I think we think about them so they're just not quite good enough on offense and that might be the thing that makes them reconsider it and bring Orlando area native home that's right bring ants home the haters guide is that the city beautiful welcomes back one of its own sons in Amphrey Simons. Okay, to close the show, let's talk about that team in South Florida. Let's talk about Dallas. Let's talk about the Lakers and a couple teams at the bottom of the Western Conference. It's the Haters Guide as we roll along. Before we get into that, though, I want to tell you about LinkedIn Jobs. If you're a small business that's hiring, you need to find people that are right for the role. You want to find quality professionals that do exactly what you need. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. It isn't just a job board. It's LinkedIn. It helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't all actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. This is where professionals already are. Go get them. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and they might not have all the resources or time to hire. So they're constantly finding ways to make the process easier. And how do you know that? Because there's already 2.5 million small businesses using LinkedIn for hiring. They know it's easy, they know it's intuitive, and they know they find the right professionals. So why don't you join the group and post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Still a pass first point guard. I'm still Mike Richmond. You are still listening to Locked on Blazers. Let's go. Let's hate. Let's continue the hatred. Let's wrap up the East real quick, and then we'll do the Western Conference. In the East, the only teams that we haven't touched on are the teams at the very bottom of the list. Miami and Chicago still alive for that final spot. I think the haters' guide to the Bulls is that they feel stuck and pressed, and the Blazers owe them a future pick, and the Blazers have a little bit of leverage. So instead of the Bulls saying, "Hey, you owe us a first-round pick that's that's lottery protected through 2028," the Blazers say, "We stink. We're never making the playoffs. If you want picks from us, it's a couple second rounders, and we'll call it even." And the Bulls say, "All right. Well, we're a little over. We're a little like." We need we need paths to get better, an avenue to get better. We need stuff we can trade. We need young players. We need so many things because we're just stuck in the middle. What kind of picks you got? And the Blazers say, "How about uh, you know, like a the thirty fourth pick in the twenty twenty four NBA draft? It's pretty close to a first round pick, and it's a second round pick that'll even make things a little bit cheaper for you moving forward." And the Bulls say. 
all right, give us a 2024 and 2026 second round pick and we'll consider your debt owed to us and the book is closed. The haters guide is that the Bulls feel stuck, whether they make the playoffs and they beat the Heat or they don't, that they feel stuck and they come a calling. And they get and the Blazers are able to owe the pick they're owed to them from uh, the long ago Larry Nance trade ends up just getting solved with a couple second round picks. The haters guide to the Miami Heat is that they trade the Damian Lillard package for Malcolm Brogdon. <laughs> That's Tyler Hero, Jaime Jaquez, and Nikola Jovic, and two first-round picks for uh, Malcolm Brogdon. No, I don't think the Blazers and Heat are going to be doing business anytime soon. So the haters' guide to the Miami Heat is that they lose and that their extremely online fan base hops in the video right here on YouTube and says some mean stuff about the Portland Trail Blazers, and you say, I'm sorry he didn't get there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. You can tell me. The, the haters' guide to the Miami Heat it's just telling me, hey, I know. Our team also doesn't have Damian Lillard. Your team just never had him, y'all. Enjoy Cancun. Okay, let's let's wrap up the Haters Guide to the West. Dallas is an interesting one because the Haters Guide to the Mavericks, they they kind of they looked like they were going to be an expensive team kind of heading nowhere and then they made some trades that like freed up their future money cleaned up their future money a little bit and allowed them some flexibility and they're better for it um very curious what happens um in dallas clippers it's a freaking great it could be a great series hope Kawhi leonard plays i can't wait um but maybe they're the mavs you know they fall again to the clippers for the third time as my man dime says clippers in seven and then he usually says a swear word but i'm not going to do that on there but like the clippers win the mavs say like gosh we were good but not good enough but they're just so freaking frustrated with 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 tim hardaway jr and they say we'll do anything to get out from under this situation and the blazers say anything anything how about including josh green and a couple future seconds and we will offer you jeremy grant and now that might not be particularly appealing to you as a blazer and i totally get it um the mavs have deep future first maybe you can get some deep future first owed to them and they'll have more picks to trade once we get to june uh so maybe you get a protected future let's call it a protected future first round pick tim hardaway jr and josh green for jeremy grant i i'm a josh green i'm, I'm, a, I'm a josh green fan so that that appeals to me and the, and the future first would appeal to me as well and you're just, you're just hoping that dallas says we're close and we need to continue to cash in and we're willing to give up assets to do so. So how about like a top four protected future first to do it? Um, let's do the bottom and then, well, let's do the Lakers. Uh, the bottom half of, of, of the West before, as we close up here. The Lakers are a first apron team, uh, projected first apron team, which means they can't take back any more money in a trade. If they could, and, and, and maybe the way that this happens is that like, Either Jackson Hayes or more likely Christian Wood just declines their player option and says, get me the hell out of here. Christian Wood is like, golly, I just I cannot stick. Like, I want to go somewhere I can play. And he and he declines his, his player option. Um, that might do it for the for the Lakers. It might get they might get a little bit closer and they could be a little more creative, but they're kind of going to need to someone to to just like not take their money in order to make it happen. It, the money is close if if. Um, if, if the Blazers or the Lakers weren't an apron team to to make a, a trade for um, Jeremy Grant and Rui, for Rui Hachimura and, and Jared Vanderbilt, if they're both apron teams, that trade is unfortunately not possible. But if it is, let's assume that it is, that the Lakers' solution, and this is why you hate on the Lakers and how you hate on the Lakers, is you say, y'all need more clutch clients. One thing the Lakers don't have enough of is clutch clients. They need clients represented by the clutch agency. And so when the Lakers do flame out of the playoffs, you say, hey, listen, clock's ticking. Father Time's going to come for LeBron at some point. And if he doesn't get more players that are represented by Rich Paul and his agency, he's probably not going to win another title. So you need Legend of the Bank, clutch clutch client, Jeremy Grant. And to do so, you're going to give up Rui Hachimura and Jared Vanderbilt. I'm not exactly sure why Rui and JV helped the Blazers, but they are good. They are like interesting good wings. Um, certainly they would help like on the basketball courts. They're maybe not like part of the future big picture but i think that's the way to hate the lakers they need more clutch clients you know you know what they need bottom of the west uh sacramento and new orleans as as they're going to play their final play-in game on friday evening you're listening to friday uh, april 19th show um i think for 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 the the kings it's like 
that they are worried that they're going to lose Malik Monk in free agency so that they need uh, the they need the playmaking and and sort of off the bench point guard scoring stuff that Malcolm Brogdon brings and they're willing to give up Kevin Herter and a protected first um, seems pretty unlikely. I can't imagine that that's how it goes down. But yeah, that, like you're hating on the Kings that it's like it just didn't work. They don't, you know, they either don't make the playoffs or they get thrashed out of the playoffs. And it's like you, you have, you can't do nothing again. You have to change what this looks like. And the Blazers get, you know, a draft pick and Kevin Herter for their troubles. Um, again, like, I think that's a. I think if you end up getting any type of first round pick for Malcolm Brogdon, you do, they, they, it's a good good deal, but um, not like a super fun one. And the final one in, in New Orleans. This is a true haters guide. This is how true haters do it. New Orleans probably gonna play, probably gonna play without Zion Williamson. What you're hoping is that Brandon Ingram goes nuts, Trey Murphy goes nuts, and then everyone forgets about Herb, and Herb says, "Hey." I know that I'm paid very fairly, even like under market, well, probably well under market for what I do. I'm one of the elite corner three point shooters in the, in the game. I'm one of the best defensive wing, def- like versatile defensive players in the game. I'm probably going to make an all defense team. And all I hear about is Trey and BI and they saved us. And there's all this money committed to, to, uh, to CJ and Zion. And I'm the odd man out. I want to spread my wings and I want to live where it rains in the Pacific Northwest. I want to be there in 44 degree February days. Send me to the silver skies of Portland, Oregon. And Herb Jones says, I need to spread my wings. And the Blazers say, come on down, Herb. And they make it work with basically Matisse Thibel's salary and and, and uh, maybe some other parts uh, to, to, to cash in and make it happen. And the Blazers get a really intriguing young wing. Is that very likely? No. But the haters guide is hoping that it blows up in someone's face, is hoping that a well-constructed team becomes a well-constructed team with people that don't get along. (laughs) That's the haters guide. That's how to root against every team in the league. Uh, If you have a way to root against every team, drop it in the comments on YouTube or email me lockedonblazerspod at gmail.com. The playoffs start in earnest this weekend. We got the final play in games tonight and then in earnest this weekend. The first round of the playoffs is the best. I actually think the second round is the best time in the NBA because you don't get any crap series. You can only good you get games every day and you only get you only get uh, good teams left. But the first round, you get multiple games. You're going to get games all weekend long like it's going to rain here in Portland. What is there? There's no better time than to watch a whole bunch of basketball on the West Coast. And you don't have to stay up till 1 a.m. like those your East Coast friends. So go enjoy the weekend. Go enjoy the first round of the playoffs. And hate, 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 just like Mike Richmond and Silky Johnson taught you too. And then come back next week for five more episodes. I appreciate your listening. I'll talk to you soon.